Whether you have a Tesla or a Polestar like me, your modern electric car has a large battery that is by far the most expensive part of it. And you don't want it to die because that basically totals your vehicle. It's very expensive to replace. The best way to take care of your battery is to follow a simple uh, routine that I'm gonna describe in this video. And this will help avoid you getting in that situation that you might get into with a smartphone where after two years, you can't use the battery. Electric cars have ways to mitigate this. First, the batteries are very large, so they degrade less relatively uh, and they take care of themselves. But there's a very simple thing you can do called setting a charge limit that helps the battery optimize its conditioning and its routine so that it can last longer. Because if your battery degrades, that means you'll lose your range and your car gets less and less usable over time. We wanna help minimize that. So if you're interested in doing that and you're curious how, please keep watching and I'll tell you all about it. So here I am sitting with my car at 60% battery. And in your car, every electric car, you're gonna have a setting screen somewhere in your center screen, your infotainment. If you have a Tesla, this is actually in the Tesla app as well. Some cars let you ch uh, change this option from their app. But generally, go to your car's vehicle settings, charge settings or battery settings, sometimes it's called charging, but basically find this menu where you can set your charge limit. This is the limit that controls the maximum percentage your battery can charge to. And it's not a hard limit, you can always change it. Um, it's not like, oh, my car is limited to 80%, I can never use more than that. No, I could set it to 100%. Uh, but generally most vehicle manufacturers, you may have heard if you've researched electric cars at all, they recommend setting your charge limit to 80%. There's a reason for this, it's battery health. So 100% is there, I'll just say off the bat, it's always there. If you're starting a road trip and you really wanna maximize your range, you should get going with 100%, get the most range off the bat, um, day to day, you know, uh, not day to day, but on trips. But regularly day to day, you wanna limit to 80. And here's the reason. As you go through different percentages, your car has a different voltage. As the car is 100%, it's a very high voltage. If it's 0%, it's actually, actually at its bottom operating voltage. And you want your car to sit in the middle. So ideally, if we wanted our batteries to last as long as possible, we'd leave our cars at 50%. And that's actually what my boss, Kyle, does. He leaves his cars around 40 to 50%. Uh, basically, that's giving them enough charge to have you know comfortable range if he gets in them, to take care of their batteries because they use their batteries to condition thermally, do some air conditioning, heat their batteries. You don't want your car sitting, especially in cold or especially hot climates at 20% or lower. You want it to have plenty of charge if it's sitting for a while to take care of itself, but you don't also so don't want it sitting in high states of charge because the higher the state of charge, the higher the voltage. The higher the voltage, especially with high temperatures out now, like if it's summer, then man, the acceleration of that battery uh, degradation is gonna happen quickly. Your battery's gonna degrade quickly. You're gonna lose range quickly. We've seen this happen, especially with early electric cars like the Nissan Leaf that had pretty primitive ways to take care of the battery. They weren't able to actively manage it and high temperatures in particular to care of their battery as did high states of charge. So generally a good balance of having lots of your car's range available at all times if you take, need to take the sudden trip um, or if you uh, just you know want to have that range comfortably is 80% because it's not 100%, 100% right, your car is sitting at a high voltage, you don't want it sitting there on a home charger or in any situation for a long time like that, 80% is good because it's less than 100%, mitigates a lot of the battery degradation, and it still gives you lots of usable range. That's the best balance. That's the big thing to take away from this video for most cars. One big fat exception to this is the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive um, and upcoming maybe Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive, not for sale yet. Also Mustang Mach-E 2024 model year, the base model that's rear wheel drive. Base cheaper cars coming out now are using a battery chemistry called lithium iron phosphate. What you need to know is that it's slightly different from the batteries every other electric car uses, and they actually do recommend, Tesla does, for the Tesla Model 3 rear-wheel drive, charging that car to 100% at least once a week. That's because they have a much flatter voltage curve. The voltage doesn't change as much with the state of charge. As a result, they get less degradation from higher states of charge. They still get more than they would at middle battery, but because those batteries are so durable, they have longer life cycles, it's less of an issue, and they want you to charge to 100% because it helps the com cars computer calibrate its range estimate its percentage estimate of your battery because uh, it guesses that based off voltage and because the voltage difference is so minor it needs that 100 percent state of charge every now and then to calibrate 
That's only, big disclaimer, if you have a real wheel drive Tesla Model 3, as of me filming this video. There's a few other cars coming into the market that will have it, but right now in the US, that's the only car with that kind of battery. Every other car has a uh, different battery chemistry uh, that relies uh, nickel-based batteries that basically are more finicky or a little bit less durable. And 80% is what you daily want to live with. So to recap the points here, 100%, you can use it for trips, um, you know, time to time, it's fine, but 80% most of the time. This is why having a home charger is great. You can set this limit and forget it. Once it's set, you never have to think about it. It's just a thing in your car that you can change. Uh, if you don't have a home charger, this only applies to public charging. And one of the downsides of not having a home charger, if you rely on public DC fast charging, like a Tesla supercharger or Electrify America or EVgo, these stalls that output, you know, high current into your car, um, they're useful to charge up quickly, but if you rely on them day to day, that's going to accelerate battery wear um, in general because they're just really high power. So one of the other best ways to take care of your battery is to set up a home charger or any charging situation at home where you can regularly use that instead of having to um, feed in high amperage current into your car from a DC fast charger. Uh, avoid those as much as possible. Use them for trips. Your car has a DC fast charging port, whether it's a Tesla port or a um, CCS port, you know, that's there in your car. Please use it. But I wouldn't depend on it every day. I would try to use home charging if I'm worried about maximizing the life of my vehicle, any kind of level two charging. A charge point stall, I'll put in a picture of one here, is also a great option for this because uh, there's also level two. So there are level two public chargers you can use if you're not in a situation where you can use home charging. They're slower, but they're better for your battery overall, and you should still respect the charge limits. One other big reason you don't want to charge past 80%, if you're using a DC fast charger, your charge rate goes off a cliff. It's pretty flat on um, level two, those alternating current chargers, like a charge point stall, the small ones, or like a um, home charger. Those are using your car's onboard charger. They're such low current that it's flat across the whole range. But on a DC fast charger, your charge speed slows way down past 60%. As you get past 80%, it slows down. This is to manage basically the battery. It's because of the chemistry of the battery and you're wasting time if you're waiting to get from 80 to 100% for no reason aside from comfort. If you feel comfortable being at 100% because you're used to that in a gas car, that's an adaption to make in EVs. You shouldn't live here all the time. 80% is where you want to live. So I apologize if I sound like a broken record in this video, but it's a point I really have to make. Your battery overall, lessons from this video, likes to be in the middle state of charge. So if you're like my boss, Kyle O'Connor, who has multiple cars, electric cars that he can't drive all the time, he has them sitting for a while and wants the batteries to last as long as possible, he leaves them at 50 to 40%. He's comfortable with that. He's used to electric car ranges. He knows where that gets him. So 40, 50%, if your car is gonna be sitting for a while, especially if you're taking a long trip, maybe not the worst idea. However, daily, you may be taking the occasional long trip, unplanned or planned, 80% is good. And if you have a planned long trip and it's a, you know not regular occurrence, sure, go to 100%. Your car's battery is there to use it. One addendum, I mentioned this, but LFP, the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive, do actually charge out to 100% once a week because it helps calibrate that car's very unique battery management system because of its different battery chemistry. Anyhow, hope this video didn't get too nerdy. Hope that helped explain things. This basically applies to every car with that stipulation I made for cars using LFP batteries. Right now, just the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive as of me filming this. Um, so. That's helpful, I hope. Um, and yeah, comment if you have a preferred charge setting or a charge zone you like to cycle and live in. Um, you know, maybe you're like Kyle and you leave yours at 50%. If you wanna explain that in the comments, feel free. I'd like to hear different perspectives. However, I think 80% is a good balance for most people. And I think that's the recommendation I wanna go with. It's gonna help maximize your battery life. If you do these tips and you live in a climate that's not too extreme, I think it's very reasonable to expect your electric car battery to easily last 10 years or longer uh, with very minimal degradation, like less than 10% of your range lost, ideally. So hope this video has been helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next out-of-spec guide video. I've been Max. See you next time.